In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good people, I'm sure you are well. Today it is Tuesday, and Tuesday 14th of September is a very big day in the Catholic Church. Because today we celebrate the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross. So, before I start, allow me to wish you a happy feast. We are doing day two or part two for uh, the outstanding characteristics of a Catholic man. Yesterday we ended by saying that this is a man who is not an enemy within. We do not want you to be the first person who, who fights the church, yet you are in. If you hear that Father CK is in some scado at on a geodoa, and then you tell your wife, and you are a Catholic. You are a Catholic. And when the church has a problem, you worship in a zoo. So it is important if, if you hear somebody say something very bad about the church, please have the audacity of saying that this is my church. And we are there. And you, when, when we have this problem, pray for us. After all, the church is not a congregation of saints. It's a congregation, as one theologian says, a congregation of redeemed sinners. I love that. Redeemed sinners. So please defend this faith. Please, men, defend this faith. Remember, you joined the Catholic faith out of your own volition. Nobody forced you. You weren't coerced to join. So please be there. Characteristic number two is that this man is a teacher of history. Now, this is important. It is good as a Catholic man. That is why we are there as your priests. Please know the history of the church. And most importantly, the history of the Catholic church. Remember, there is... Uh, three types of histories that you'd be able to learn. Of course, four. We've got the civil history. The one that we, we learn in high schools and universities. Then we have got the history of the church. It's a wide thing. Eh? Number three, part of that, history of salvation. And number four, the history of the Catholic church. Even the others don't know. But please understand the history of the Catholic Church. I, sometimes I feel frustrated if I go to a certain parish and then I ask Christians, when was this parish started? Some do not even know. I know listening to me are men who cannot even say when their parish was started, who was their first parish priest, from where it was hived, who are the first missionaries? All those things. Please understand. You know why? Because the enemies of the Catholic Church, the first thing they do is to learn the history of the Catholic Church. So that when they come to bash you, they will bash from a position of knowledge. So you can imagine a scenario where the enemy of the Catholic Church is more informed than you who is a Catholic man. That is a disgrace. Dear men, we are there as your priests and we are very well trained. Very well trained, very well formed, and very well educated. Where you feel that you need our help, please let us help you to be well informed so that you will not be hearing about the Catholic faith from others, answer some simple, small questions about the wh why the church does this and when did it start, what was the reason behind that, very important. After you have done that, please be a teacher of the family history. The family history, please teach that and it is very important. On, on that, I will ask you to do the following. 
as you teach the family history, please be the defender of culture. Every man exists in a certain culture. Defend that culture. We are product of a certain culture. Being a Christian does not make you not to be a cultural being. In fact, we were first cultural beings before we became Christians. If you understand that, then you are okay. Please defend that culture. As you do that, there is one thing I'm going to request you, Catholic men. Please allow your children to understand their mother tongue. Please teach them literally. If you are a, a Catholic man and you can speak your mother tongue, your wife can speak her mother tongue, and your children cannot, my brother, you have failed. Kaput. That is not being sophisticated. And I always say this, when your children cannot speak their mother tongue, they are not sophisticated. You are a father of lost souls. Linguistically speaking and culturally speaking. That is why, because we have not, they have not known their history, that is why cousins are marrying cousins and cousins are sleeping with the cousins. Because maybe they do not even know who sired who, who did what. After you have done that, please, dear men, Understand your family tree and teach your children about the family tree. When you are doing that, please understand the dysfunction because every family has two roots. There is the root of you as the husband and the root of the wife. And, and this root constitutes a distinct family tree from where your wife come from, comes from and yourself. So please understand this and try to see the dysfunctions that are in your family tree and those that comes from the root of your wife so that you can let your children know. If you are a father of sons, please let them know. My sons, I am coming from a family of people who are alcoholics. So there is a possibility that if you do not take care of yourselves because you carry my genes, you, you have a very high affinity of becoming addicts, alcoholics. Let your children know even the struggles that you have generationally. The struggles that your wife has generationally. Understanding dysfunctions as a Christian is very important because now you know what to pray for and your intercession will be about what. Very important. Dear men, I know so many of you are struggling with some private sins, some of which are actually generational. Did you know, until such a time that you confront your private sin, you cannot father your son. You cannot be an effective father to your son. Until the day you wake up and decide to fight your private sin, it is the day you know what is freedom, and you teach the same freedom to your children. Please. And when you are free, you are able to guide your sons and your daughters. And then you give a chance to your wife to be a mother to all the children with all the dysfunctions and the problems because you are there and you cannot hide from it, dear men. Please do that. About the family uh, dysfunctions, there's what we call continuities and discontinuities, continuities and discontinuities of generational dysfunctions. Now, what do I mean? Here I want to talk about some cultural practices. There are those things that were being practiced by our forefathers and are being done even now. There are those that were being done and now 
as a family you decide or as, or, as a, or as a culture you decide that this we can't do teach the discontinuities understand the continuities and discontinuities dear men and here i want to talk to men who are below 45 years because here they are guilty as charged dear young men young catholic men below 45 years you are the men who think that the rest of your casual people dropped from heaven they didn't before you demonize a certain casual practice please as an informed man try to learn the wisdom that informed whatever it is that our forefathers were doing they were not fools you may not want to do what they were doing but please understand why they were doing it and also try to be informed why something else must be done we call them continuities and discontinuities the problem we have is that we have young men very well educated but casually lost and illiterate so you wake up one day and you say no these casual practices are evil they are not evil there is no casual practice that is evil the problem is you judge from a position of ignorance don't do that please understand why were our forefathers doing this? I know there are some cultures, for example, that shave their children. There are some cultures that dictate that this must be done. During wedding, this and this must be done. During barrios, this and this must be done. Don't wake up tell us, telling us that, you know, I was, uh, I was educated in Europe. These things are not done in Europe. These are evil things. No. They are not evil things. There is nothing that human beings do that have no reason why it is being done. Our forefathers may not have done something for hundreds of years because of being, because of foolishness. No. Before you judge them, please understand the wisdom that informed whatever it is that they were doing. Teach your children that this is what they were doing and that this is why it is not being done now that is part of what we call family history in which you are a teacher dear men may god bless you please don't allow yourself to be lost generationally i want to add with something i have already said and I'm saying this as a priest who have traveled. It is important, even if you live which part of the world, please know your language. Please do. Please do. I'll give some lengthy devotion on this because there is something I will want to teach. The connection between the language we speak and the cultural practices and a few other things that pertains to the morality of the family. It is important. Please, don't allow your sons and daughters to go about life. And they cannot speak one word from their mother tongue. Don't call yourself a learned or a sophisticated family. Because all of you speak English and some other, and some other languages. That you have a daughter who is 16 years old. She knows four foreign languages and she cannot speak a word. She cannot greet her grandmother in her mother tongue. My brother, you have failed. Ume tu agusha. Na ume ni agusha as your priest and servant. And I stop there. Tomorrow we do part three. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, do have a productive Tuesday. Again, happy feast.